Best podcast in the business. The name is Show Me the Money. Welcome back to another episode of Show Me the Money podcast. I am still here in France. Money Moicano back at home and Gilbert Burns at home as well. How does it feel, Moicano? First of all, I got to give you the mic right off the bat, bro. What is going on with these rankings? My brother, wow. you tell me, brother. I cannot believe that not only they didn't put me up, Benoit is in the same place, brother. How crazy is that yeah. you lose and you're in the same place? Brother, twice. he got destroyed. He got destroyed. Yeah. Finished twice yeah. in a row and he didn't go down a single spot. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it either, brother. But that's not up to me. We have to keep grinding. We have to keep fighting. And I saw some people talking about my shoulder. But my shoulder is just fine. And I'm planning to fight on December. So you don't need you don't need surgery, nothing. Just little PT, you're gonna be good. Are you good already? I'm good already. I I I already have fought, right? So I'm I'm 100 percent I'm 100 percent and I want to keep the momentum going, brother. I'm feeling yeah. great. You have no damage, right? Maybe go a couple punches, maybe one punch, nothing. Nothing. Wow. Look at Not this one guy. Punch. Not one okay. punch, my brother. So, <laughs> Not was, one fucking punch, my brother. The, so that I'm was the best, using, huh? The don't guy you remember went, this? Don't you remember yeah. this? This yeah, is yeah, the 300, yeah. my brother. The 300. The, and now is the Paris. The Gucci, so, the money shades are from USC 300. Yeah, my brother. Every time I have to wear them now, every every time that I win, it's like traditional. So, so that was one of or your best, like, vacation not vacation, but your best trip to work. There you go there. You go, you talk about the president. You beat the guy up. You get paid, go back home. So that's one of, one of the best, like, mission that they accomplished. That, 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 that was very good. The only bad part is that French is definitely a socialist country, my brother. If you go over there, you know, because they take a lot of my money, my brother. So, sometimes when I'm you much, fight... Bro. UFC 50k, brother, and they didn't 50. give it to you, right? 50k, 50k. Can you believe that? It's, it's not like I, mm. I, I won the bonus, I lost a bonus, my brother. On France, yeah, lost bonus. you know, wow. I lost a bonus. And, and yeah, if you if you if you're telling me that I didn't deserve the bonus, you're crazy because I saw a lot of people refusing the fight. I went over there on enemy territory and I just destroyed him on the first round, brother. And yeah. they didn't give me the bonus, and they take a, take a, my bonus from me, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Let's talk. So let's talk about the bonus. I, I want to touch. I want to talk about the bonus and the rankings. But let's start with the bonus because four fighters got performance of the night: Brian Battle, Morgan Shire, Faraz Ziam, and Chris Duncan. So I want to ask Gilbert, where would you have put Moicano if you placed him in there in that four? Because Far as the arm had, let me just recap. So far as the arm had a needed head that was one of the most, um, one of the best knockouts of the year, right? Then we had Brian yeah. Battle standing TKO. That was nice right? performance. Too. It was nice, nice. performance. That was nice. Maybe and on the mic was pretty hyped too. That and was then, nice too. Yeah, yeah. And then Morgan Shire had the round two uh, knockout. I didn't think it was yeah. a TKO. I think it was pretty much a knockout. And then yeah. Chris Duncan. I actually wasn't even in the uh, in the arena yet when he got that finish, but I heard he was kind of losing, and then he he wrapped up that guillotine on the ground or something. He ended up getting yeah. a, a submission. So hey. where would you? More, <laughs> more, I would ask Moicano first. Then, out of those four, where would you put yourself for the bonus? Hey. Story, Chris Duncan. You wait to teach you, you turn to Moicano, but bro, <laughs> you, you 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 just got in the buzz, my guy. So gotta work a little harder to this bonus next time, brother. That would be Chris Duncan for sure, right? To be honest, Chris Duncan is my friend. Not only my friend, but he's a training partner. Helps me a lot with the... But... With, <laughs> but... <laughs> but, <laughs> but when, when you're talking about bonus, you have to take consideration the whole circumstances, right? For sure. He, he was fighting a guy that had no fights in UFC. I think he was... He, 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 he had one uh, fight on Contender Series. So, of course, he was not the same level. of One thing is... 
do that to a guy that is debuting, knocking him, him a, a guy. That, but other thing is doing what I did on the first round against a very good opponent. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, two fights ago, everybody was thinking this guy was the boogeyman. Even I, I thought he would beat Dustin Poirier because he is very good. But, you know, don't get a bonus over this. It's kind of frustrating. But what can I do, yeah. right? Especially you, you. You take the risk. You go all the way to France. Know this guy's going to stole your money. And then, like, don't get no rewards. I, I, I was very frustrated for you because... You went all the way there. You had a great performance. Bad than I thought. I thought third, you finish on the second, but I thought you were going to finish on the third. And then that was amazing. Then I say, now he's going to get the bonus. I'm very happy. This guy's going to make a barbecue for us. I'm very happy. He's going to do. <laughs> Let's you know, go. It's happening. Grand. And then it's happening, anyway, brother. And they, they didn't give the 50 grand. I was so mad. And then, okay, okay, no problem. At least this guy's going to bump on the ranks. And then I look at yeah. the ranks today, like, wow, no bonus, lost 50,000 for the government, and no, no, not even like true, nothing on the ranks. I was just like, man, yeah, okay. Not but, even one or two positions. But on, on the same way, I know the UFC is very smart, too. I know the UFC is not going to do, do nothing. Yeah. They're gonna give the fight that you want. So I think my question will be: Who do you want? That's the UFC asking. Do you want Patty Pimblet or do you want Dan Hooker? I think I think I'm almost sure they're gonna ask you. And you have the power right now because get don't get me wrong. Like a lot of guys fight on those fight nights on the weekends. Saturday night is Apex or someone else. But they don't make the noise that you did Saturday night and Sunday, especially because the fight here in the U.S. was very early. So your fight was done maybe 7, 8 p.m. The whole night, everyone was talking about you. I went to a top golf with Vagra Rossi, a couple other guys, Renato. They all, man, he look amazing. Crazy. Sunday, everybody was talking about you. Monday, everybody was talking about you. Tuesday, everybody's talking about you. So... You have no idea how much I think you know, but people have no idea how much how much noise you make. You make way more noise than Patty Pimblet that he did when when he beat Bobby Green over there. You make so much more noise than Dan Hooker when he beat Mateo's game raw. So I do believe you're in a position right now that UFC gonna hey Moicano, what do you want? You know, and then and he, that's I'm glad that you talk about this because I have to say thank you to Dan Lambert, American top two owner. Because he's so smart. He told you. He he's told so you. smart. And he told me, he said, man, this is a huge opportunity for you. A lot of people will say that uh, th that fight is not good for you because he's lost to Dustin Poirier. But he is very famous. He he, he has almost a million followers on, on, on his page. And he's from Europe. So 100% this guy is very famous. And I went to France. And it's crazy because uh, he, he his face was all over the place. You know, on the betting stuff. Even on TV, he was doing like commercials for like McDonald's and stuff over there. So wow, I don't know why, brother. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't. I. I. I don't want to shitting on him because, but I think he wasn't proved yet. Yeah. Right. So so I, my point is, thank you so much, Dan Lambert, because he saw that and he said, man, that fight's gonna change your career for sure. It did. This change. is gonna catapult you. And now the best thing you don't need. To, to rely on nobody, right? Because sometimes to get a title fight, yeah, title fight, you need like big names. You need to fight Gage, or you need to fight uh, somebody that fight for the title. Right now, you just have to keep winning. Doesn't matter who you fight now. Could be Paddy Pimblet, could be Dan Hooker, could be Justin Gage. Doesn't matter. One more win, two more wins. Doesn't matter. You're gonna fight for the title because now people are start to like you say recognizing you, and that's the, the Dan Lambert is a genius. He never gave me a a bad advice. So thank you so much, Don Lambert. And, and to be completely honest with you, again, Paddy Pimblet is a good fight because he's famous, but I would rather to fight him if, you, if we do the ultimate fight. Because that's going to be funny and, and a lot of exposure, you know. But other than that, for just a fight, I would rather face, face Justin Gage because I think Dan Hooker is not going to get the fight, you know. He has the opportunity now to say, let's fight, but He's saying that I that I dodged him on Perth. That's not true because they didn't offer me the fight, you know. So 
let's make the fight for December. I'm telling you, I'm ready. December, January, doesn't matter. But if Dan Hooker doesn't want that fight, let's let's go with uh, uh, just engage. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw Chel Sonny talking about that, and I agreed. With, and I agree with him. I think just engage will be a good fight. And doesn't okay. matter, brother. I'm coming for the gold, my brother. I will be fucking champion on this division. You guys saw, brother. You guys saw Saturday. Levels, levels. And uh, I want to ask you something because that's what, seven fight win streak or six? Seven, right? Six. Six win streaks, yeah. Six. Oh, what what did you change? What, what was the change? That six like, win streaks <laughs> and five finishes and yeah. five finishes. And five well, what, what 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 you change? What what you change to to get the results? It was a lot of things. It was just strength conditioning. It was listening to the coach. You stopped doing actual like what what was the change? Four years ago, I had my first son, like I say, and now I have to take care of my family, right? And, and that's why I change everything. Like I change my mindset now. It's go time. Let's go. There is no way that I that I will be not champion because again. I cannot afford to lose. That's true, brother. When I say I cannot afford to lose, I can't. I cannot. Yes. You saw, I just bought a new house. I just, I am keeping buying stuff, so I need to pay for that stuff, my brother. I cannot <laughs> afford to lose. <laughs> love it. Love it. So it was, it was more the mindset that changed then, right? The mindset. Yeah, like it was now the I mindset. 100%. 100%. Because oh, back on in the day, training, you, you change everything, anything on the training or not really? Like who you listen, your circle, maybe? No, I keep my, my circle small. But one thing that I change in training, I'm not trying to win every train, every training session. Like back in the day, I used to try to win every training session. But right now, it's not about that. I don't have to win. Because imagine you, if you have like I, I had two months of training, to winning every day on the gym is, is almost impossible. Yeah. And I, I did that before. And when I was in the fight, I was completely broke because I was so tired to be competing. So right now, I just want to compete on the fight day. I don't want to compete against the fans. Like, if the fans talk shit, that's okay. If people doubt me, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I just have to show up and perform on the fight day. So that's why I was so calm and, and collected on, on, on last Saturday because I knew today is the day for me to perform. It was not one week before. It was not two weeks before. You know, it's the time uh, to perform is Saturday and pay off very good for me. I have one more on that. Uh, so I forgot. <laughs> you just put that photo right there. Uh, uh, it's one more on the performance. Uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, after the way in, the commission you guys that on the place. I know that didn't affect you. You look freaking amazing on the fight, but it could, right? It could have because a couple of guys was asking me, a couple of friends, we were talking, they say, how about this wake up? Because I think Brendan Wallen was affected, but it's crazy because Moicano wasn't. And I say, yeah, but it's different. It's just like a, a flu. You know, sometimes you get a flu, no problem. It's still working, it don't feel as bad. But sometimes you get a flu that kind of kills you, right? That you have no energy, that you like. So do you, in your opinion, do you think that mess with Breno Allen's performance? I think I think that could have mess him, especially because I, I think they were very angry, you know? We were at the, the place, and once they say, hey, you have to do the test and this, they say, fuck, but you know what, I'm not going to care too much because if we keep thinking about that, they're going to consume you. And I was seeing yes. Brendan Allen and his coaches and they are trying to fight back, you know. They are trying, hey, this is bullshit. His opponent is on the room. They spend like 30, 40 minutes trying to... to fighting. Fighting the, 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 the commissions. And I was relaxed. I said, brother, there is nothing you can do, bro. Fuck that. And, and the no. other thing that why it didn't affect me because uh, my fight was like midnight. So we leave the hotel... 8 30 p.m so i had the whole day to to recover, recover right but nice. if the fight was in vegas probably that would affect me because sometimes in vegas you leave the hotel like two o'clock right 2 p.m so yeah. to, to, depending on, on on your place on the on the on the card so that definitely would affect me because i made the wake like 10 10 10 o'clock in the morning and i leave the room like 2 p.m so that that was fucking unbelievable i don't know 
four hours like waiting to 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 do the test right because i didn't yeah. have water on my blood i didn't have water on my body so and, and you could not go to your room and they come back down they didn't no, allow you no wow. because they only had like two people on the commission and they say once you notify you you cannot leave because you have to have a person with you all the times but they had more than than three or four athletes over there i know but that's they fault right if you go they to fought. the room yes so but, the but they room, say if you go to the room i can't say the fight Yes, if you go to the room, that, that's going to be like you you leaving, you, you miss like, you missing, miss, yeah, you. like Vanderlei Silva did. You remember when the when he yeah. when he ran off the, you miss the so test, say, yeah. Yeah, you're missing test, you're trying to avoid the test. No, bro, I'm trying to go to my room and sleep. I'm tired. I I cut like uh, uh 12 pounds, brother, 10 pounds, something like that, yeah. crazy stuff. So I was yeah, very tired, but you know what. Sometimes you cannot do anything. You have to. You do accept what you quick, right? You yeah, accept because, quick. Like I'm yeah, gonna do it. Okay. That, there is no point in fighting and trying to fight them back because uh, at that time they had the power, right? But after, yeah. after the weigh-ins, the the ceremonial weigh-ins, Hunter Camp will show up and say, "Hey, Moicano, I'm sorry. I'm sorry so much for that. That was the commission fault. We're not gonna have that happen again." happen again. I say, "Hey, Hunter, don't worry." Uh, I'll never I come care. back. <laughs> don't worry. I'll never come back here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should have so, said that, but I didn't think that I didn't that didn't click, you know. I was just saying, don't don't worry. There is no problem. And but it is what it is, you know. You have to you have to roll with the punches. If they throw you rocks, you have to to, to dodge. So I don't care. The, I don't care if the commission is corrupt or if they're just dumb. One of the those two, you know, or they are yeah. corrupt or they are dumb. They both, is, or they both. Yeah, or they both, you know. But you you cannot you cannot test somebody that don't have water on the body, and and if you try to do that, at least you should like try to select random French guys. But there was only people from yeah. America and other places in Brazil. So what what the fuck is going on? And and, and once the guy say, hey, but we test Benoit and then all the time here in France, and say yes. The American Testing Commission now, test, yeah. test me all the time too. What what's the point? I'm telling you right now, there is no point in do that. But uh, but uh, that's a good point. Yeah. No, that's a good point because they're saying they're the commission is basically saying we test all these French guys all the time, but you guys are getting tested at home all the time. All the, you know? the same thing, yeah. I'll tell the you my way. point of view. So so Kyle and I were in the media room when you guys weighed in. So first of all, I gotta give props to Moicano because BSD. First fighter to make weight out of everyone, right? Moicano was at the very end. Then the commission pulls out what they did to him, right? And then I'm, Kyle and I are waiting like two hours. We're waiting for Moicano to come out after the weigh-ins. We're like, where is he, right? The door keeps opening and shutting. We keep seeing glances of him. We're like, when's yeah. he coming out? Then Tuco comes out and starts telling Kyle and I everything that's going down. I see Brendan Allen's team. I see Brendan walking around and, and Moicano is right like, he was wearing it. He was mad, bro. He's walking back and forth, pissed off. We finally see Moicano come out. It, it nothing phases this dude, nah, man. He comes bro. out. He's I happy as ever. Brother. Daps us yeah. up like he, nothing do, phases him right now. He's he's in a mindset where he controls what he can control, yes. and nothing yeah. is going to stop him. Yeah. Nothing's going to get in nice. the way. He rolls with the punches, no matter yeah. what. The yeah. shoulder, the commission, the travel, the. Everything, bro. He rolls with the punches and he fucking does what he needs to do to get it done. So I gotta, I gotta give him so much props for that. Thank you so much. That, that is no, that is no point in, in being like acting like a victim and say yeah, negative, right? Yeah, yeah negative. negative. Too, I say, brother, I don't care. I'm gonna use that. You know, on the way in, on the ceremonial way in, people like were booing me and say, okay, motherfuckers, you're gonna see tomorrow. That, some people say that Benoit Saint Denis owe me money, right? So, man, <laughs> looks like he's. <laughs> Look like Benoit and then he's owing more kind of money because he's very mad, right? And I was, brother. And I was, I was because I was mad with all that bullshit, my brother. You know, I know it's not Benoit and then he fought, but I want to send a message to the French motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Say, man, fuck you guys, brother. You, you're gonna try to to keep me down to do that that stuff, but I I will show you guys on the day that I need that Saturday. Yes, you know? it, that's and, it. And another question: Chris Duncan was that you on that on that place when they stop everybody or no? He no, was, he was, no, no. 
Who you else was there? Joe Anderson was there. Brito was there. Yeah, he Brito. didn't fuck good at all, bro. You think that may be affecting him a little bit too or no? Ah, bro, I don't want to talk shit about Brito because I, man, the guy's huge for a guy's fight. Big, right? The guy's huge for a fight. The first day, I was like that. He got over there was like Monday, and he was already doing the sauna and cutting weight. And I asked how much you waiting right now. He was 84 kilos. This is like 186. Wow, 185. 185, yeah. 185. 186, maybe. He was 185. Wow. I was 170. You know how much I was? I was, I think, was 70. 170. 70, 72, 70. Yeah. 72, 170, 170, 170. And the guy was 185. And I said, brother, how are you going to cut the weight? So I think he stopped Jeez. to drink water on the Wednesday. You know, and he was cutting wow. weight and he was training twice a day, brother. Wow. He was That's like crazy. doing pads, you know, he was doing pads at the morning and then he was going to the sauna at night. And I say, what the <laughs> fuck? The guy's training two, two times a day just to cut the weight, you know? So I think that was the wow. problem when I was 45. That changed my mind too, because I, I had to do the same thing. That's so bad for me. On the day of the fight, I was, I was tired. So that's, so like, like in this friends, I try to relax. You know, I was very relaxed. I said, brother, yeah. I'm not going to let the, anything phase me. So my point is he was too heavy. And I think he was too cocky on the fight. You see on the way in, the way he was touching the guy and looking. I think he thought that he would beat the guy when he won. Yeah. And he's way better than the guy. Way, way, way better, yeah. you know. But, but it, a fight is a fight. But one thing that I want to point yeah. out too. The, in the moment that that we were on the on the room with the the the, the testing, this guy William Gomi was over there, but not to be tested, but because he could not walk, he was very 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 bad, very very crack bad. head again, like a crack head. Worse than that because like he was sitting, wow. and his coach was holding him for more than I don't know one hour and a half, and he was throwing. Blah. But I'm throwing, throwing up, wow! Throwing up like crazy, like crazy. Wow. He was thrown in up, and then people clean, and then he was thrown in up again, like a lot of water, brother. He was very, and I thought tomorrow Brito is going to smash this kid. But I, I thought so too, fire. bro. I thought so too. I I had wow, Brito I inside so the distance. Too. Me too, dude. Wow. So uh, I was telling Gilbert, I was telling Moicano before before you came on earlier. I had I got to read you guys this. I know all the, the YouTube uh, subscribers get pissed when I talk about my gambling losses, but I have to tell you guys this one. I had a three-leg parlay, Gilbert. Brian Battle wins in round two. Moicano, you showed me. Moicano and Brendan Allen. No, no, no. Not Brendan Allen. Brian Battle wins in round two. Moicano wins in round two. Brito wins in round two. So technically Moicano's win was round two because of the stoppage afterwards. Yep. And uh, Brian Battle won by TK in round two. Brito had that submission attempt on the ground in round two, and he had it locked in for like a minute or two, right? He just couldn't finish it. He finishes that submission. I win $225,000. It was a $300 bet. Wow. It was a three-leg parlay, $300 bet. It was crazy odds. So, I, But obviously, wow. I, didn't know, I didn't know that, right? Because Moicano was the last, the last fight, so I, I, was, I didn't know. You know, in hindsight, that would have won me the two hundred twenty-five if you got it. Yeah. Let but. me let me ask how much money you put on on, on my fight. So Just I won straight bet. So you, I I won twenty-two thousand on your fight, but I put like ten or ten or twelve thousand on it because you were an underdog. Yeah. So the, I tell a lot of people, brother. I, I so you got a new glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, <laughs> let's so talk about hey, money. I'll buy him glasses, but he's got to wear them, talk about, bro. Let, let's he's got to wear the Gucci's. Let's talk about money because I'm still... Uh, we still have to talk about the other money, my brother. On the dress <laughs> 300. What are you talking about? No, no inside information, my brother. Bro, I, hey. I don't think you understand. I was so happy to see you wearing the Gucci's on, on the pod today. I I don't know, Gilbert. Give me your opinion. You saw the, the, the glasses he was wearing at the... At the press conference, which ones you the like Gucci, better, bro? The, the, I like the, the Gucci's, Gucci's bro. Is better. The Gucci's, the Gucci. the, those Gucci's with the money suit you had on would have been on. Point, I don't, 
I, I don't know. I don't have glasses yet, so I don't know. Yeah. I cannot. I cannot, I cannot I answer you, that. Bro. I got you, bro. I got you. <laughs> hey, I have la last question. I have for Morcano regarding on, on that on the on the whole drama before the fight is how much Pahumpa Gabriel and your coach to help you with that, or they don't need to say anything. Or did Pahumpa came? How how was that process? The coaches kind of like. Helping you, or you, or you just did by your own. You're like, man, I was just so locked in that I didn't. No, I was locked in. I was good, but my coaches always help. Like Gabriel and his brother, I have been training with Gabriel, my boxing coach, since yes. I think yeah. 2013 and 11, 12, something like that. Like long, long time. So he always was like that. He he always said to me, brother, you have to believe in yourself. You're one of the best. He was always like that, but but but. Pahumpa, he did a very good thing on the on the weightings. He he said, brother, a lot of people crumble when they when they go to places like that with a, with a lot of pressure. But you have a very good personality, you know. You have character. You have to show your character. You have to show your personality. You know, don't be afraid uh, to like to 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 people boo you embrace that he said that on the way in because i was kind of a little nervous because everybody was talking about that I, at one point i had the brother i was so mad with that because i was at the hotel and then a guy show up and he said hey i'm i'm producer of benoit sandini i want to take a picture with you i say okay i i work for a french company of mma videos and uh i represent Cyril gun all the french fighters and benoit sandini da, 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 and we have a a surprise for you. The crowd would be very... He, he tried to mock me, you know? He say the crowd will be very special for you, be electric, you're going to be... Like telling that the crowd will affect the fight, right? And then that w was into my head for a couple of days, right? I was, man, that what, what is going to happen? The crowd will be too loud. Can I, can I uh, hear my coaches and stuff? But then I went to the weightings and Pahumpa said that to me, show your personality, be yourself, be, right? Um, show your character. And then I went up and I see people booing and say, that's it? That's nothing, my brother. That's fucking nothing. What, the, what can they do? You know, a, a, a crowd full of people that cannot do nothing to you is nothing, my brother. But like I was saying, I'm, it's, very, it's way, way worse if you are in Brazil in a street with nobody, my brother. That's way, way dangerous, you know? I, I don't I'm, I don't have afraid of a lot of people. I'm afraid if there is no people on the street, that's the fucking problem in Brazil, you know? Yeah. So so after that, I was very, uh, very chill, you know? So th that was the only thing that was worrying me because these guys show up. That's why you have to keep your circle small because sometimes you're cutting wage and, and people try to, to mess with your head, saying stuff, you know? So that's why... Uh, when I'm at the hotel, I don't like to talk to people to take pictures because you never know who wants you to win and who wants you to lose. So they, they try to poison you, you know what I mean? And this guy I was very surprised because I said, What what a motherfucker, bro? The guy comes up here and try to play games, you know? And after the fight, I was going to the hotel and say, Hey, congratulations. And I say, Man, fuck you, brother. Fuck you, <laughs> you know? It is what it is. Yeah. Dude, the French. So we, we were outside like all the bars and restaurants before, you know, before everyone. I saw the video. I like you, brother. Your T-shirt, all your stuff was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. You, bro, course, you are bro. real one, my brother. Hey, I got you, bro. The French, I don't want to talk shit on the, the French fans, but like, I think everything you just said was spot on. Like they, they would say, I don't know. They were kind of like either timid or they would just say things. But, like, I don't know. I feel like there's not a huge fan base for MMA there. Yes. Like, it's very, like, yeah, I went, getting, you're getting I big went through, yeah, I went, through, like, we went and interviewed a bunch of, of fans just sta standing outside the arena, and, like, they didn't have a lot of MMA knowledge. Like, you know, again, it's just, I, I guess it's getting more and more popular. It's new. It's new. It's new. It was it's a good new. time, though. There was a lot of, there was a lot of fans that were super nice people, though. Like, we would buy drinks for each other, and. You know, it was a good time for sure. So I saw yeah. I saw the guy say Moikanos is sleeping tomorrow. And he said he's sleeping because he had a great win. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Uh, I, I, I asked that too about your coach because I saw you and you look very comfortable in the ways. And I kind of 
felt that that you man, he's gonna kill this guy. And uh, you know what you remind me? You don't even know what, but you know what you remind me when Jamal Hill fought Glover in Brazil. I felt the same thing. I just I faced off with New Magni and then Figueiredo came in and faced off with Breno Moreno. And then with Jamal Hill and Glover Teixeira, and I was back watching a little bit. And Jamal Hill was so confident, like crazy confident, that people, you gonna die. And then he got the mic and said, he's gonna die. What are you guys talking about? We all gonna die. But nah. and then he went crazy. I was just like, but I, it was not fake, you know. Was, I feel yeah. that that was him talking. And then I like, and then when you went to the face off, it was there. You give him the same vibes as he yeah, freaking Moicano is ready to kill this guy. That's why I was ready. asking if and, and, more and, help. And, and, yes, and he helps. And Pahumpa, he helped me with that on the way in. And, I, I, and, and like you're saying, brother, after the way in, I was so confident. And then when, when I went back to the backstage, people were asking me, I say, hey, get ready, friends, because tomorrow I'm going to fuck up your boy. You guys don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to put on a show. I'm gonna put it in statement, and so so the the sometimes when people try to hold you down, that makes you even dangerous, right? And that's what happened. Better, they were, right? they were, it was better, brother. I love the people against me. That was good. I love that. So, so next fight in France again? No, no France, bro. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking France, bro, brother. Don't get me any wrong. Was good. I I made some money, yeah. but the problem is. The taxation staff, my brother, you know crazy, that. Bro. Especially if you don't live on the country, they, they want to tax you. How crazy is that, brother? You don't live over there. You don't have to pay income in ta uh, tax income. You, you know, I, I, that's not my residence. Why I have to pay taxes on, on, on the fucking... Brother, yeah, fuck, fuck this, brother. Mm -hmm. This is unbelievable. It, it's crazy because when UFC goes to the city, the money that the UFC brings is crazy because yeah. all the Ubers, Uber taxis are working like crazy. Restaurants, hotels, are... restaurants, airport, like everything, like the 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 the, the airplanes, like every everything is making so much more money. That why are you gonna make a tax so high that people don't want to come back? It should be the opposite. Like you're gonna make a tax very low if you. Out of the country, come the tax lower. We come, come every time. You know what? I love the UFC in my country. Let's do it three times next year. You know because you guys bring yeah. so much ice, so much money. But they do the opposite. Like it's it, it, it's it's dumb, right? It's crazy. Yeah. It's dumb, and you penalize people that produce. That's the problem. You know, if you produce, if you make money, and people start to tax you, you're gonna. I'm not gonna fight in France anymore, brother. I'm telling you, that was opportunity. But I, 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 if I can. You know, even on England and even on, on Australia, I, I heard Australia is even worse. It's like 40%. Australia, Brother, is, how, Australia is bad, yeah. How the fuck? I know because Mateus Ganot just fought over there and he was fucking, they steal for him. You know, that that's so much money that he lost too. So uh, if you if you if you do the math, it doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, let's let's. I want to talk about the first round and the second round, both Moicano, because a couple things. First of all, you showed the video on social media of you preparing to catch his kicks and get the takedown, timed it perfectly. But like, talk us through that a little bit, but also about your ability to keep him on the ground and land all that ground and pound. Because we we actually talked to Gilbert about this a few episodes back about. Gilbert nailed this. He, he was spot on about like the USC doesn't hate grapplers; they hate grapplers that are boring and don't do damage but like you held him down the entire round and landed a ridiculous amount of strikes to the face and vicious ground and pound how are you able to keep him on the ground like that because every time that i fight i see what i did wrong and i don't know if you guys remember but on the dobe fight my ground and pound was terrible you know escape and from the back yeah escape from the back okay. and then after my 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 fight with dobe uh, my coaches say, hey, you need to work on your ground and pound. So I have been working in the ground and pound since the beginning of the year, since February. January, February, I have been working like every Wednesday. I do a, a class by myself, only doing ground and pound and grappling. So we get the, the, the pads and I'm doing ground and pound on a partner. And then they 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 are like, marcando tempo, como é que eu falo isso? With the timing. 
They are with the timing. They say, hey, uh, live, go live, and then grappling. Grappling, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, and then two minutes, ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound, be tired, be tired, and grappling. So with this training, because it's like takedowns. If you don't train takedowns live really hard, you're going to guess out trying to take down. The ground and pound is the same thing. Like if you if you don't walk on, on these positions, once you're in a fight and you start to do the ground and pound, if you don't finish the guy, you're going to be tired. So I have be, I have working on my endurance on the ground and pound with the heavy bag, with the pads, with the partners. And and, and like my, my jiu-jitsu, like Gilbert Burns, we have been training, I don't know, Ever. you start to train with, we, you were a kid, right? So in, 12, you know, yeah. 12, me too. I, I started to train at, at 11. So I have been training for more than 20 years. But we just train in control. There is no ground and pound. So we have to put the elbows over there because it's easy. It's very easy. And once you land a very good shot, the guys hurt. They, they, you know, it they are not the, the same. Fight, right? It changed yeah. completely the fight. And, and I'm not afraid. And, back, and some people, they let's say they get the takedown, they are afraid of posture and the guy gets up you know so they're more like holding the guy until the end of the house i'm not worried if you stand up again i will strike if, with you and put you on the ground so i'm not afraid i'm not afraid to be tired i'm not afraid to you stand up i'm not afraid of striking but now i want to make damage i want to to do damage because it changed the fight change the fight change the fight was it was a domination it was a domination yeah, there was a really good. Uh, I have to find the video, but there's a really good breakdown video on social media showing like what you did in every position, how like when he would posture up, you would use your head to push him back down, and just it, I have to find that video and send it to you because it was it was a really well put together video. But talk us through going in the round two, right? Because you came out, the judges actually gave him the uh, they gave they gave him that round, right? So you were. You oh, had yeah, um, but who cares? But who yeah. cares? No, like, no, 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 I know I'm not I'm not going against you, but look, the he did 10 8 in the first round, killed the guy. That guy faces look like a Shrek. Look, it looks so <laughs> ugly, so bad. Eventually, they're gonna stop the fight when I when I started you did a couple jab and his face was a mess. And you kind of more relaxed moving. I already know he just chilling that round because every jab that he throws, every little thing that he throws is gonna blow up that face. So I, I, I whenever you start that first minute moving, taking your time, relax, you give a shot, you say, I oh, should I waste energy? And I think I just thought what well, you're talking, like what well, you're thinking. Oh, he's not gonna waste energy, he's just gonna move again, beat exactly. that guy up. I was just like, okay, sure, if they don't stop. At the end of the second round, he, they're gonna stop on the next round, so he don't need he don't need to rush. That that was your yeah. thing, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like after the first round, I saw and my coach say, "Hey, that was a ten eight. You're giving me a beat, and his eyes is very bad." So uh, they they were just trying to 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 get me back. Like, but I was not tired. That's the whole thing. That's that's what's crazy because I got to take down with twenty seconds. Nah. And then I was just on the top and I was not really using too much energy. So in my mind, I was, man, this is a five round fight. I want to go five rounds. You know, I want to go five rounds. I want to take my time. And especially when the fight starts and he kick and I say, man, what, where is the power? The power was gone. The hand was yeah. gone. Everything was gone. He was so tired. He was yeah. so tired that I was just, you could see I was even blocking. I was blocking that the, that's not. That's not boxing. That's MMA. You you should never do that. But he was so tired. Can I say okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna just touch the jab because his eyes going to be worse. And, and I was thinking yeah. about that. The more the fight goes, is better because these eyes this, this is not gonna recover. So I'm gonna move, touch him with the jab, and eventually they're gonna stop the fight because there is no way he can see that. Put that put the photo. And I was looking to his face. And his face was a mess. I say, hey, this guy's not. Yeah. Look at that, bro. I could see, I could see he was not uh, seeing with the right eye. Yeah, he yeah. was not seeing with the right eye. So I was blocking yeah. the punches, you know. And I was okay. I have, I have uh, three more rounds to go. That is no problem. That is no problem. Yeah. Uh, and I think I did right because I wanted to. Hundred percent. I want to have experience. I want to have, you know. 
But at the same time, yeah. maybe a finish would be better, but it is what it is. That's what I was going to no, say. Because I, I was going to say, I feel like the only reason they didn't give you perform, like, I feel like Gilbert, tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like if they would have stopped it late in that yeah. first round, they would have gave him the 50 K, but because the way the fight ended with the doctor stoppage, I feel like they, they stole that bonus from him because of that. I think that's the argument to talk about it. You know, like if, because the way the, that's the, the way on the media and on the UFC, I you like, because you killed me in the first round and you took your time in the second. Be he's thinking if you go forward, you kill that guy in two minutes on the second round, you know, but you took your time. That's why I think that's the only argument that they have to, to take away your bonus. But my question is, he was that strong, like everybody was saying, yeah, this guy's a monster. You felt that? You don't look like you felt that. Like He felt normal or he felt very strong. No, he felt he felt normal, and you could see he was strong. But the problem is, he was trying to do butterfly guard on media. And I tell you guys before the fight, I say, brother, if this motherfucker sweep me, you. if this motherfucker swipe me with a uh, with a uh, with a butterfly, butterfly, you can change my name, my brother. There is no way this <laughs> motherfucker gonna, uh, you know. There is no way this motherfucker gonna sweep me like that. Nobody, even if you yeah. if you fighting a a two o five guy, you know, he can give the back, but to swipe like that is unbelievable. So I think he was a little bit cocky because the other guys he did that to the guys, right? But I know the technique. What's yeah. the technique? If the guy start to do the butterfly guard, you you hold your hands on, on his back. He's not going to have power. Yes, He's not going to have power. That's it. Only that. So he was, on the beginning, he was doing a lot of strength to try to move me. So he was spending a lot of energy. And I, saw, and I was just, okay, my brother, keep doing that. Keep doing that. You're going to be fucked. And then he started to, to, to be desesperated, you know? He was desesperated. Once he saw that he's he not going to swipe me, he was trying, trying, trying. And then I got his back and he was like, man, what the fuck is going on? So I think he lost his 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 mind his at the time. Maybe, his right, confidence, yeah. yeah. Mm. His confidence. And yeah. but I have to give him props mm. because he is very, very, very tough. Very you know, tough, right? J just yeah. to come back like that, a lot of people would quit. And he's for sure. But but again, he's tough, very durable, but he's lacking a little bit bit of technique. He trusts too much on his power, on his physicality, you know. You gotta go to ATT to train in money more kind to get better. Not only and, ATT, I think I think I think ATT would be good for him, especially because he's a grappler and there is a lot of grappling on on ATT. And overall, you know, I think Francis is still on the early beginnings. I was right. watching all the fighters during the fight week. The, the French fighters were doing everything wrong, you know. The the weight cuts, the pads. The training, I was saw guys sparring on the fucking fight week, you know? And I said, what these guys are doing, my brother? You're just here to relax, enjoy, and cut the weight. And they were training like they were in a training camp. Fight oh, week boy. is not training camp, right? So what that means, What that means that they don't know. They, that means the commission don't know. It's new. It's like Maddie was saying. A lot of people don't know about the sport too much. Yeah. And uh, imagine training in a gym like that. So... If, if you go to every to a big gym in America, everybody knows how to cut weight, knows how to spar, knows how to train, knows the, the technique. So there is a huge gap between Europe and America in Brazil in technique and, and skills on the fight week and everything. Let's talk about that post-fight post -fight interview. Because, Makana, I want to get your opinion. So there's rumors that Sean Strickland actually had trouble getting a title shot early on with DDP because of his interviews in Canada. Do you think anything about your interview today had any impact on the bonus or just anything in general, the ranking? 100% in the bonus, 100% in the bonus. You cannot tell me that that was not because the interview, because... But Brian but, Battle, Brian Battle got it, and he said, fuck the French, he... Fuck Brother, <laughs> let me tell something. Let me tell. Let me tell what I want to do. On the beginning, when they say you're gonna fight in France, I even talk uh, with that to you guys. I, I was thinking, brother, I will do this to everybody and say fuck you. I will do the same thing that Brian Battle did, right? But I was at the, at the, at the backstage, like doing the warm up, 
and I was watching the fight, and I see Brian Barron doing that, and I say, hey, I'm not going to do the same thing, so I'm going to change a little bit what I, I will uh. say. So that's why I changed, and thanks God I changed, because they 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 charge him $200,000. Did you see that? No, no, that's not real, bro. You, that's you got... real. The commission say that he owes $200,000. No. Yes, and he's banned from, from France. Of bro. course, he's not, he's not going to pay the money, you know, but that could have consequences because all the commissions, they are tied. So maybe he cannot fight in Europe or, or, or something like that. So you, you look it up. Brian Battle. Uh, I saw him put it out. You know, Barstool Sports put that out. Spin and Backfist owned by Barstool Sports. So right when I saw it was Barstool Sports, I assumed it was a it was it was parody. A joke, yeah. It was no, it's not a joke. I don't how do you know it's not a joke? Who confirmed it? Because I was talking to Dan Lambert and he was saying that he said that was that was real. They they charge him. No, it's I have a, I have an article right here. It says he's not real. He's a joke. Yeah, real. that's no, what I no. sent you. Yeah, 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 you got you got duped, bro. Yeah, fuck <laughs> that, my brother. Don't trust the don't trust yeah. the internet, my brother. I mean, bro, if you would have got five two hundred, that's I'm assuming that's more than his fight purse. <laughs> I, I don't know, but but the, the problem is, I was thinking about that and say, hey, if UFC give me the bonus. They are like endorsing what I say, right? Mm. Fuck Macron. And I'm pretty sure, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they need the president to make the UFC on Paris, right? So yeah. I think they're not gonna give me the bonus, but maybe under the table. You are gonna call Dana White to say Dana White, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay a lot of taxes, so let's uh but fuck that, brother. I will do the same either way, you know, is the way I feel. And, and she gotta be honest, yeah. And, yes, oh. exactly. And and, and and fuck France, brother. Let's be fucking honest. Fuck France, bro. Bro, all you gotta do is go to a Ve go to Vegas with Dana and just find him at a blackjack table. Maybe he'll slip you a fifty k piece, <laughs> brother. I think he he's not allowed to bet anymore. I think he's like he cannot go to the casinos anymore. I I heard that some casinos. I heard he's banned too. He's I don't know banned. If it's true. Yeah, he's oh, banned. But I heard. I heard Dana is banned from a couple of casinos. So, yeah, so, so no casinos for Dana White, but I will say Dana White. <laughs> Under the table, 50K is good, my brother, right? Just to cover my expenses. Because That's if you it. put on the paper with the flights, and if I've, and you don't know the worst, my brother. I went to Paris on the business class. Everything's fine. Nine hours is sleepy. And I go back on the fucking economic, my brother. That was the worst. <laughs> oh. I thought yeah, that I would come bad. back on the business. But the motherfucker sent me on the economy again, my brother. And I say, man, that's that's fucked up, my brother. But it is what it is. So give me the 5K under the table and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do. Is there any fights you want to talk about on this past card before we go in the next weekend? I know we touched on a few of them. Uh, Alan versus Imavov, Burrito versus Gomi, we talked about a little bit. But what, let's talk about the Allen versus Imavov fight because he 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 looked pretty decent in round one. He he had, had that body lock, got a really nice takedown right away in the round. Make it, he made a huge statement early in round one, but then he kind of faded in that fight. Uh, and to my my opinion, I don't think he trusted his striking enough. Right, like he was shooting takedowns from far out in round two and three. Whereas I feel like if he would have trusted his striking a little bit more, he could have maybe stole either the second or third round and won a decision. Were you able to see that? I know that was the co-main event, Moikana, but were you able to watch any of that fight? What did you think Yes, of it? I, was, I was watching all the fights, and I was surprised because I always thought Brendan Allen as a good fighter, but he didn't look good at all in this fight, you know? He was not looking good. That's, the, that's my honest opinion because he was, like, spamming takedowns. He was, like, shooting crazy. Like, in was not, you know, some, and especially for a spot like that, the guy was number four, so that's possibly a title eliminator, right? He could fight for the title after the fight. So on the second round, you ha you had to change your, your strategy. And even on the third, go for for all win, you know, go for for the kill because he was Imavov was defending the thing. I didn't like the fight too much, bro. I didn't like the fight too much. But my, my opinion, I think that there was maybe Brandon Allis Allen fought because. On the first round, he didn't take advantage of the ground and pound. And on the second round, he was trying and could not get. In the third round, he was doing the same thing, shooting for takedowns. It's not working. You have to change, you know? I was with that on my mind. If I try the takedowns and I cannot take Benoit Sandini down uh, and I lose, like, the force, 
the second I will come back stronger. And the third is strong. And the four, all win. You know, you have to go to the all win. Especially if you're in a position like Brendan Wally was. And I think that hurt him a little bit. Yeah. Do you think the extra two rounds would have benefited him if he got the five-rounder, Gilbert? Or do you think it would have played out no, the same? The way, I, get back, I get back in a minute, brothers. No worries. The way, the, the way he looked it, I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe – I think it was a little bit mentally. I think the way – we talked already. I texted him a couple of times. We back and forth. He said he messed up. He said he don't want to give no excuse. Shout out to him above. But he didn't look, you know, the way he, he should. And I think the, all of that was maybe was the way maybe was the recovery is a lot of facts that could kind of help on that. But I do think if you took advantage of the ground and pound in the first round, it would change the whole fight. You know, if he does yeah. what Moicano did on BSD on the first round, he evolve, he could do whatever he wants on the second and the third round. But we're still learning. You know, these guys were 27, 28 years old. It's still yeah. super young. Top 10. Beat so many guys. I think right. I think he's going to learn from that. He's going to be be way better fighter. I still believe he can be a champion. So, For sure. to me, maybe to fix a couple things here and there. Maybe a better way to cut you. Maybe little things. And uh, I still believe he, he does. I do believe that no one's fault. But that wasn't the best man in Ali. That was maybe the best in Mavov, but that's the day that counts, right? So, but I do yeah. believe Bernal is gonna he's gonna do to do, do a lot of good things in this division. Yeah, I always forget how young he is, bro. I like Brendan Allen. I think he's got a good Very future. Uh, you know, not even and, uh, thirty years old. More kind of already knew that he's gonna have a baby. See that he he's inside the baby thing. How we call that little baby thing? Right crib, there. crib, crib. He's he's inside the crib, <laughs> bro. Everybody's talking about that on the video. Say, hey, bro, why why are you in a fucking crib? Say, I don't know, bro. This is the the way the house is built, no, bro. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, one or two other fights I want to talk about. Uh, we talked about Brian Battle a little bit already, but uh, Far Zion versus Matt Frivola. That was a good fight. I was so I was blown away by that finish at late in the third round. That was just a perfectly timed knee. He literally pushed his head down into the knee, which made it even more vicious. What did you guys make of that fight? And what do you think should be next for for Frivola? Man, Frivola is in a bad place right now, right? He lost two in a row, right? Yeah, he lost the BSD, the BSD head kick. BSD in, in yeah. you know, Frivola huge enough. He haven't fought before BS uh, after BSD. That was his first fight back. I think so. I think that was his first fight back. Yeah, let me check too. Nice for Vola. Because because that was so long ago. Yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah, last time they beat last time he So he beat yeah. Drew Dober, then he lost the BSD, and then Zia. Yeah. Yeah. You know the problem with yeah, Frivola is funny. he's so he's so powerful that he can he. He can knock everybody out on the division, but at the same time, I don't think skill wise on the striking he's polished, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> and especially with with a striker like that that is very tall, yeah. th this guy is very very dangerous, brother. Yeah. Very dangerous. And I, I I don't I don't even think he's, he's the polish to because. I think there's a lot of guys that are not that polished, but they're smart. You know, they have a good IQ that they know they're not as good. So they're going to, you know what, if I see a bomb, I throw If I'm not, let's take this guy down. I don't think his IQ is the best. He cannot be consistent with the IQ, with the little strategy. He gets very emotional, very quick. So it's kind of it's kind of easy to these guys to make him make a mistake, you know. So I think now he needs to take a little time off because those two knockouts back-to-back -back is – affects you a lot. He should take a little time off and come back. He, he, that's the only thing. This division that you guys at is it's so hard that yeah. sometimes they go, oh, we're going to give you these upcoming guys. He's a freaking roofie. The guy from Brazil was like so good that... that that's a fight that I want to, to see. Farizian versus Rufi. I think that's the fight to make. Mm. I think that's the fight to make. That's, that's that'll be a good, a good one. That'll be a... That's a good fight. That I think this fight was good. Go. That guy Rufi is so good in Brazil. He's so hyped. Like 
everyone is talking about this guy in Brazil like crazy. He said he's the next champion, 100%, this and that. I still want to see more from the guy because I was when I was there in Rio for well, Pantoja fight, I was so busy with so much appearance that I didn't watch this guy if I was doing appearance. Make money, right, Gilbert Brandt? I, I was Brand working. Makes a lot of money with these appearances, my brother. This guy is the guy, brother. I, I want to watch this guy fighting, so I didn't watch his fight yet. But, bro, you have no yeah. idea. Everybody is saying this guy is the next, is the, 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 the next one. They said they were trying to get him a fight since, what, 305? I don't know, 30. That's crazy, right? Know. Nobody. They said everyone's declining this guy. Everyone's saying, no, he was on a 307. He was on another event. He wasn't, and no, no one says yes. Everyone say no. How crazy is that? Unbelievable, uh, unbelievable, brother. They need to fight him a fight, a fight as soon as possible. But but Ferizian against this guy would be a good fight. I like that. I one. think that's the fight to make. You know, two guys very tall strikers. I think Rufi is better grappler, right? Because Ferizian is not a grappler. So. But it, that's going to be a war. And I don't think it's an easy fight for neither of those guys. So yeah. I, let's see. Let's see. I don't know if how how far Farizian wants to... How far, Yeah, I don't... How I think close. he's got to fight back. Yeah, he got to fight backwards to fight Roof, you know, because he's coming from a two, three win streak. Like that crazy knockout they should give him. But it doesn't matter. Everybody's talking about, about this guy, Roof. If you beat him... Yeah. You get but more in Brazil, right? He in America, they, they hyping that guy up a little bit, Mario, or not much. I think so. Man, like you say, nobody's accepting the fight, so everybody knows that the guy is dangerous. Everybody knows. And he, he is dangerous. What he did against the Australian guy was, was good. He was good. But, but still only one fight in UFC. BSD was good two fights ago, too. You know, now he's fucking trash. Everybody's talking. You know... It, That's so bad from UFC fans, but it is what it is. Yeah. Who's trash now? Who's say... trash now? The fans. The fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moicano, I want to do a quick segment before we move on to this weekend's card. Yes. We're going to do easy money or not so easy. I'm going to run through the lightweight division. All right. Up first, Michael Chandler. Easy money. Patty Pimblet. Easy money. Benil Dariush. Easy money. Max Holloway. Not so easy. Dan Hooker. Easy money. Rafael Fazib. Not so easy. <laughs> Justin Gagey. Not so easy. Charles Alvera. Not so easy. Armin Sarukian. He's thinking. He's thinking. Not so easy. <laughs> He's not easy one. He's not easy one. But but Islam I don't want to talk Chab. about um, uh, Islam Makachev. Not so easy. But I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I think if you ask me, Khabib, I was thinking about that. Islam, I think Islam is a worse version of Khabib, right? I don't think he's in the same level of Khabib. What do you guys think? Better striking. Better striking. Yeah. Better, yeah, better but, strike. Way better striking. Look, Poirier fighting Islam Akachev and Poirier fighting Khabib. Even though he's better striker, that makes him... But you could also say that Poirier is just is, is evolved and is better now. Yeah. yeah. No, about, no, I don't think. think grappling wise, do you think? But think about the head kick of Volkanovski. When Khabib will do that, you know? That's kind of like no, he will not, he'll never do that. But Khabib, but he was a 45. We have to see him fighting upwards. And I think even though Khabib not a striker, if he fought at the time Leon Edwards or Belal, he would beat Belal and Leon Edwards. Even Belal is saying that. Belal was saying that even now on training, he's like training for him and say, Hey, give me coffee. That's easy, you know. Completely different style, but I think if he's learned fight Khabib. Khabib would win, you know. I but I don't know the why big, I'm saying that. I don't big, know why I'm the saying big, that. The big brother always wins. Yeah. If you think about it, you know. Yeah, but what, what I want to say is Lamakachev is not unbeatable, brother. Right. He's not unbeatable. 
Well, hopefully you'll be fighting him soon, bro. In two, two or three fights. Sure. I think less than that, bro. I think two three fights. fights. Imagine three you fights. Said, I would you said one fight. How many fights you said, Matty? I said three two fights. or three. I said two or three. No, not three. Not one or two. Not one three. One or two. Depending. One or two. One because or two. three, I would be like nine win streak on the on the lightweight. That's crazy. Nobody does that, no. right? Yeah. Two, you two know? more fights, maybe one, fights. maybe one, it, maybe one, yeah, two more maybe fights, one. maybe one. Maybe, I believe. Maybe, I just, two I just think, mean, um, I just think I maybe, two. maybe two because they they gave to uh, Oliveira and, and Michael Chandler. So depends how the fight they, goes. Depends yeah. how the fight goes. But when I say two fights, when I say when I say two fights, I mean one fight and then the second fight is this is the second. But you see, you, yeah, see you said two or three. Said two I or said three. two or three. Yeah, because if he fights like Patty Pimblet next, you just don't know. It might be the no, second true. or third after that. I I, I just think it might be two because of that. Yeah. Michael Chandler and and and, and, uh, and Oliveira go crazy, so this guy, the winner, go go next. It we never know, out. brother. We don't know the future. Somebody can get hurt, you know. Yeah, they yeah. can call me. Right. They can call me to, to fight Oliveira or Chandler. I'll be ready. I will be ready. Nice. You when know, so that? I don't know. November, right? November. I will be yeah, right. Yeah, I will. I will get back to training like in one week, one week, and I don't need much time to, to train, brother. I'm 35. <laughs> go time. Ah, uh, let's dive into. Let's go to seven. Three or seven. seven. This is actually a really, really good card. Uh, it's in Salt Lake City this weekend. So let's start with ah, my zombies. It's a good card, bro. You don't, think, you don't think? I don't like the co-main event. Let's see the, 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 the let me see the, the I, I think I think look we got Juliana Pena against Raquel Pennington. Bad, 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 bad. But and then on the on the on the on the main and card, this is gonna have, be five rounds, but, five rounds. But, oh five my rounds. god. But then we have Kayla Harrison, Kathleen Vieira. Good fight. These, this fight is for the is for the belt. Whoever yeah. wins that fight is the champion. So yeah. why yeah. they should just swap that, you know, put uh Juliana <laughs> Payne and, and Raquel Pennington on the prelims, open prelims, you know, the first part of the night, and give the belt to Kayla and Caitlin. Whoever wins is the champion. That will be the best thing to do on that card. What do you think, Morcano? Yes, I think <laughs> I think Kayla is winning, and Kayla is going to be I the do. champion. It's I going do to be too, very bro. hard, brother. Have you seen Kayla training? She's no. unbelievable, brother. But the, the only girl, the only girl that can do something on Kayla and will not, but the only one that could do something is Caitlin. Exactly. If so that's Caitlin, why. If, if Caitlin, and I don't think she will be able to do much, but if she cannot, why is Raquel Pennington and Juliana Payne? I don't like that. So Kayla Harrison is beating. Caitlin and eventually she's gonna be whoever. Who you think is gonna win, Kat, the Pennington or 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 Juliana Payne? And Juliana Payne too. She's the Kobe Kobe thing of the women because she coming from a loss. She haven't fought in like three years, and then she's fighting for the title. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> I think right, right. I, but I think loss, Juliana right? Payne. I think Juliana Payne will beat Raquel Pennington, in my opinion. But but she's coming from a loss, it. right? Her last fight was the loss when Amanda Nunes, Amanda Nunes re, being retired for like five years already. Mm -hmm. That was the that was his last fight when five she years. lost to Amanda five Nunes years. five five years ago. And, they, and now she, she gets a title shot like after what five years not fighting. She the, her last fight was before COVID, and now she got a title shot. That's crazy, right? That's that's just crazy. But it doesn't matter, but I think Kayla will, yeah. will become champion. And... So Kayla is going to win and, and Juliana, you think? I don't know about Juliana. Yes. And maybe Raquel Pennington, maybe. I don't know. I think I, I think Pennington. I'm, I'm going Pennington to be Juliana. Me too. Juliana Me too. got beat down in that Amanda Nunez fight for five rounds. But I she, she beat she Amanda just, Nunez one time. That so that, that, that we have to give her that. She beat the GOAT. Yeah, she beat the goal once. Yeah, but then by the way, that was bad. that was one of the biggest upsets in MMA history. By the way, yeah, but we have to remember Ky Kyla lost too. 
Yeah. For, for, for Pacheco. So. Larissa, Larissa, yeah. yeah. But, but one thing is for sure. With... One thing is for sure, my brother. There is somebody that is not losing on this card and he's underdog. José Aldo is not losing to Mario what? Batista. How no, come he's in underdog? a million years, brother. How come he's an underdog? And one thing you got to tell about José Aldo, one thing you got to tell you about. If you saw, he just turned how long ago. I'm 38. But I remember we were both, I was 18 years old in Brazil. I was 18 in Brazil. I was a blue belt. And Jose Aldo was kind of like 19, 20 when he moved to Rio and he was purple belt. Now I'm older than him. I remember <laughs> when we were blue belt, I was, I was one or two years younger than him. Now I'm older than him. I don't know what happened, but what I'm happened? older than Jose what Aldo. Happened? I don't know. That's crazy. They do that on NFL too. To these guys go to the time is different in Brazil. Time is different in Brazil, my brother. In Manaus, right? In in the jungle, in Manaus, it's different. It's different. Crazy, bro. But one thing is for sure: Jose Aldo is not losing. What Mario Batista is going to do to Jose Aldo? Taking him down? That's impossible, brother. Be him on the strike? That's impossible. Why Batista is you? You put your truck money on Aldo, right, Mario? Or no? Dude, so everybody's going to be on Jose Aldo as a small underdog here. Bautista is good, bro. Jose Aldo. No. Right, no. The level of the level disrespect, of bro. disrespect against the light. Right, so you're the saying king that, you're saying that. The You see this glove? You see this glove? This glove yeah. punch Jose Aldo several times in the face, my brother. Show some respect yeah. for the glove, my brother. The Mario, Bautista, uh. Mario Bautista is on a six-fight win streak. About against who? Play. Against who? Yeah, Damon Blackshear, Ricky Simone, Guido Canetti. Yeah, no, it's not the highest level. I, I agree with you guys. I agree with you guys. But we'll just say, let's, look, look let's at, start. But, but look, real quick, before we move, yeah. Jose Aldo last six fights. Take a look. Jose Aldo last six fights. I'll like tell you Maybe right four now. monsters, three Francis Ngannou, four monsters. Uh, Jonathan, Mar Jonathan Martinez, Marab, Rob Font, Pedro Munoz, Cheeto. Peter Jan, Marlon Marais, and Volk. That's more than six, but that's a that's, lineup right there. <laughs> that's levels, right? Yeah, but he has, and, what, four losses out of all this. Yeah, but when you see Canetti, it, give Canetti to, to, to Aldo to see what happened. Give the other right, two right. guys that you said that. that you far, know what's like, crazy? Not, not even Merab took him down, brother. Yeah. Not even but, Mirab. Not even well, Mirab scored a single a... takedown on Jose Aldo. He was controlling yeah. on the cage, but Mario Batista well, you know, is not... You know, Marlon, you, know, you know Marlon took him down, right? Yes, yes. But that was a Mar hip throw. That was a hip throw. Marlon is freaking... But hey, hey, respect to Marlon. Marlon is good, bro. Marlon is fucking great, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was a hip throw. It <laughs> was a hip throw. It was a hip throw. Was not was not a wrestling <laughs> takedown. It was like he used Aldo and then he... He did But like no, a no one does that, so no, yeah, he was good. Mario yeah. Batista is not doing that, but for sure, no way, bro. All right, let's start. Let's go to the prelims, Mike. I want to start. We're gonna work our way up the card here. There's one fight on the prelims we have to start with. Now, guys, before we dive into the fights, make sure you check out our sponsor. It is in the description. Wow. Lift Sweepstakes Sportsbook. You guys get some free coin to get some action with on the fights for this weekend. Is Stephen Thompson is winning. Use code show me. Use code show me. The link is in the description so you guys can get, get some uh, cash to bet with. Uh, Which fight you want to talk part, about, Manny? The fight I want to talk about is Stephen Thompson. Uh, no, There's no, you want to talk Kentucky. about Marina Rodriguez and Yasmin Lucinda, no? <laughs> <laughs> I want to get your opinion because Gilbert has fought. This is Gilbert's division. He's fought Stephen Thompson. Who wins this fight right now? Because Stephen Thompson is like a plus. I believe plus 160 underdog. Let me take a look here. Plus 150 underdog. Buckley is a two to one favorite here. Do you think Buckley is able to use his physicality, get the takedowns, or do you think Wonderboy can win this fight on the feet? I think Buckley is going to mix it up and going to win. I think Buckley is very, he's still very explosive, fast. He get a couple takedowns. You know, he tried a couple to take a couple guys down. I think he's going to. Take him down a little bit on the beginning. You know, where the storm a little bit, beat him up on the ground and pound. And then second round, he might strike a little bit. I think he's not going to strike a lot on the first round. First round, he's going to mix it up, take downs. I think Buckley wins. Maybe with a late finish, you know, because 
Stephen Thompson is not that monster anymore. He's 40 or 47, I think. What the fuck, bro? 47. <laughs> <laughs> 47. The level. the level. He's like 40, isn't he? 42. But I think Buck, Buck, I, I think Buckley's winning that fight. I think Stephen Thompson, think? because Buckley, even though like he showed on his last fights that his boxing evolved a lot, he's like had movement and stuff very, very fast. I think Stephen Thompson still can, can like keep the distance and touch him. You know, I don't know. I yeah. think Stephen Thompson in, but it's not a sure thing. That's not a lot. Right. Joaquin no. Buckley, we, but but he's a, but he's a favorite, right? It's not even a lock. Buckley's yeah, he's, he's like a minus two hundred favorite. I struggle with this fight because I kind of feel like, I feel like Wonder Boy ha has a chance to to stuff these takedowns here and just piece him up on the feet. But I, we'll I see. don't think so. I'm definitely not laying the minus two hundred on Buckley. So I'm either underdog or pass here. So I'm probably gonna just pass on the fight or maybe bet some some long shots or props. But let's move on to the main card. But, okay, uh, let's go back real quick, real quick. Uh, yeah, Cesar Almeida against Iro, Igor Pochiera. Cesar Almeida yeah. is not losing that fight, you. But don't don't touch that, my brother. Don't touch that. No, no, that's a crazy fight to bet because Cesar Almeida doesn't even know how to 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 right take down defense. He lost to yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. But he's with Glover now, working. But most he's minus four hundred. You make yeah, no money by betting. You gotta play team. the. You gotta play the knockout prop yeah. on that one. Yeah. Remember, like remember, mid, I'm not. I'm not. Bad. Remember, I'm not betting guys. So I'm just kind of like, oh, this guy's gonna win. Neither do I. Way, I'm not. A, right? I'm not betting too. But like, if he's minus four hundred, doesn't doesn't do any good because I don't even could... know he was minus four hundred, right. my guy. My but, is learning, bro. He's learning the game. He's learning the. No, eye. because look, look. This other guy, I think this other guy is trash, to be honest. This guy is very bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this so Igor almost beat, uh, what's the guy's name? Big guy. He, he, he only, beat Shogun. only beat Shogun. That's it. Other than... Shogun, Picanha. No, Shogun and was Picanha Shogun. No, the, the, not fit Shogun. The guy, yeah, no, no. And the guy the guy from Brazil, that the guy had a crazy comeback. What's the guy's name? He's always He was LFA champion. Uh, I don't know. He was beating the know. guy up, but then, but then the guy came he back gassed. and, 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 fit, and gassed, fit, he yeah. Yes. dude. And I then hit he got the one bet on that, and he's the only guy too that got a backflip sheet on the <laughs> on the yeah. neck from Michel Pereira yeah. and got back and got no. So I don't think that guy's winning. No, I think Cesar Meda is winning, but betting wise, that that is that, yeah. that's a, a bet that you want to pass because Igor Poteria could even like even Cesar Almeida could sleep, right? And, and Poteria is on the top and maybe get a finish or something like that. So it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, Igor fought. So let's Rodolfo. go to the Gilbert was Rodolfo yes. Bellato. Yeah, and bro, yeah, he was beating the shit out of him. And then he was he was landing ground and pound, but he gassed right on top of him. And then Bellato got back to off to, on the feet and finished him on the feet in round two. So it was a crazy war. But all right, let's go to the main card here. The first fight of the main card is, I think, a good matchup here. Roman Delize versus, yeah. versus Kevin Holland. We it feels like we see Kevin Holland in these spots all the time where he's like minus 150, minus 170, minus 200 range. And he's fighting guys that can grapple, and he, he seems to lose these types of matchups. But what do you guys think here? Because this is a very important fight for both guys. I have no idea what's going to happen in this fight. No idea at all. Yeah. That's, that's one of the best matchups I like on, on that card, to be honest. Because Kevin Holland is crazy, but I don't think Romando Lidzi is, is he striking so bad. I don't think his strike is good at all. But he's a good, strong grappler. You know, he doesn't have a lot of takedowns. That's a little threat against Kevin Hall because if you cannot take him down, you're not going to take him down. If you're wrestling, you really have good takedowns, you take him down. But I don't think Roman Lidzi has good takedowns. He's just very I think if the fight stays on the feet, Kevin Hall will piece him up. But the guy is very strong. That might pull him against the cage, keep trying to grapple, you know, maybe catching a kick and taking him down. 
he's, he's a very close fight. I um I'm uh, I want Kevin Holland to win. A little biased because I like Kevin Holland more than Romano Leeds, so I don't know. It's kind of close yeah. to me. Yeah. It's just close. because I want Kevin yeah. Holland to win, but I don't know if he yeah. will. Romando yeah. Lindsay takedowns are not clean, you know, not like money, like great takedowns, but he's very, very, very strong. That's why everybody complains about it. So, and Kevin Holland yeah. was kind of the one that was making it went back to 85. And Romando Lindsay, you know, Sean always fights at 205. So, he definitely going to have the, the strength advantage, the weight advantage. I don't know if that's going to be enough to beat Kevin Holland, but maybe. I want Kevin Holland to win, but I'm a little bit over to Romando Leeds to win that fight on a very boring holding against the plans decision. Yeah. What I'll say, like Romando Leeds, say, he has some really nice wins. Like he finished Jack Hernanson. Um, you know, he just beat Anthony Smith, outstruck him 100 to 51, took him down once in the fight. And then Imavov, he did go five rounds with. He got, you know, he got dominated in the strike and he got outlanded 112 to 34. Um, but then like the Marvin Vittori loss, I don't love that loss over three rounds. Outstruck 106 to 71. There's just some fights. The Trevin Giles fight, he lost a three rounder. He's a little bit up and down, but I just feel like these yeah. are the types of fights that Kevin Holland ends up losing, though. So I'm, I'm torn on this fight. But I'm definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you, everything you're saying. But the guys that he lost, if you take a look again, he lost to who? He lost to Imavov, Marvin Vittori, and Travis. Travis. Travis Giles, yeah. You know what those three guys that he lost have in common? What? Takedown defense are very good. So he wasn't able to take these guys down. He ended up losing. Yeah. So the That's question true. this fight is, can Kevin Holland defend takedowns? If he can and don't get tired, he's going to win that fight on, on the feet. But the only thing that kind of mess with that thing a little bit is the Leeds is huge for 185. Kevin Holland is not the biggest 185. So I can see kind of Roman Leeds making a boring cage control fight. But my my, I think Kevin Holland will be – his game plan will be – don't get close to the cage. Piece that guy up. A lot of movement. That's the way to Kevin Holland to win. But yeah, uh, you know what do you think? You putting money in that fight, Matty, or no? I may, but I, I'm not confident on the. I, I'm definitely not laying Kevin Holland as on the money line. If I if I look to play him, it might be in a different way. Like maybe by decision, probably by decision. Honestly, I get some good plus money on that. Um, maybe look at the sub props on either guy. I don't know. It's a tough fight. I don't really like this fight from a betting standpoint. I, the only thing I don't see, I don't see a sub for both guys. Kevin Holland doesn't look, but he has a very good jiu-jitsu. He can defend and take down the all the submission attempts. Ramon yeah. is, a, is a good grappler. He got a couple of submissions, but no, I don't think he has enough to, to finish Kevin Holland, I think. But, yeah. What do you think about this fight to go? This is only a three rounder. What do you think about this fight to go the distance? Because that could be a good bet. It goes to the distance. I think I it, don't. it could go to the distance. I think it go. Yeah. I think it goes to the distance. No, no submission. Kevin Holland hits very hard, but that guy's huge. I don't think he's gonna get a yeah. knockout like that. He fought a couple of tough competition. I think that fight definitely goes to a decision. Yeah, they're both very durable too. Very. I like that. Maybe we look at that. Maybe we look at that for our parlay. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. Kayla Vieira versus Kayla Harrison. <laughs> Kayla Harrison is a minus 800 favorite in this spot. Is there any chance she gets caught here, or is this just pure domination? Pure domination by Kayla Harrison. Yeah. And how do you like her to win? Because any my, gamblers that are going to bet on her, you can't really bet her money lines. So, it's decision, I think KO, it's or stuff. Huge. She she doesn't have a lot of submission, Moicano. No, no, but no, she okay. she she's good with the elbows. So if she can get TKO? get her down, no, I think it's TKO. going to be. She a will get her down. You don't think she finished on TKO? No, it's going to be three rounds. I think it's going to be decision. For sure, I thought I thought he's because Kathleen Kathleen Vieira is very good striker, but not as good on. No, Kathleen Vieira is is a grappler. 
Oh yeah, she's good. She's a grappler. She's and, and she's like her background is judo, so I think she she gonna gonna to impose some trouble to Kayla, but Kayla will win. Yeah, but they right when they say oh this guy's judo and the other one is two times Olympic medalist. Like it's different level. Yeah, Judah, it's different right? level. But she, I think she knows how to play guard, how to survive on the ground. I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be easy for Kayla to TKO her. Finish, on the ground. right? Yeah, to finish. Okay, yeah, but domination like on the domination. decision. Okay, I like I that. Think domination on the decision. Yeah. So I let's like do it. this then. So her over two and a half for that fight is minus one seventy. That's not bad. Are you guys down to ride that minus two seventy yeah. or minus yeah. one seventy? Sorry. And then what do you think about the fight before over two and a half for Kevin Holland, Roman Lidze is minus 240. A little more expensive, but I'm down to throw that in too. I think both hit. Let's go. Yeah, All right, I agree. let's do it. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We got two legs to the parlay so far. We have – Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo for yeah. sure. Jose you guys Aldo, want to try Aldo for he's sure. Plus, he's, Jose Aldo is plus 120 right now on Fliff. So anyone that's watching, if you want to go get some action in on Jose Aldo, go use the link in the description. Code show me for some free, free cash. Moicano and Gilbert are guaranteeing that Jose Aldo wins as a dog. If they if they if he doesn't win, they will they will send you a Venmo. <laughs> no way, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, I send you a punch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm down to put Jose out of here. Plus 120. Sure, all right, you it. You, you're think... thinking about betting on Bautista before we had that conversation? No, I was thinking about just not taking either side. No, but Jose out is lean. The level man, 100%. of disrespect, bro. The level hey, you're thinking you about putting money on Bautista. I'll tell you one thing. Hey, Jive is on Jose Auto. He gave it out yesterday to our, to our subscribers. So he's on Jose Auto as an underdog. But you were thinking of going Bautista, be honest. I was thinking about not touching either side. You gotta understand the way I bet Gilbert is I bet a lot of crazy shit. I don't bet a lot but of But not even out. not even a little bit on Bautista, be honest. No, because I, he's not on the dog. There is no war for Bautista, I think. I think Bautista is very high level and very good, but yeah, it's not a great price point for him to be a favorite. Okay. Nice How do you think man. Jose Auto gets it done? Decision? This KO. Decision. Decision. 38 okay. years old, very, very tired, you know, <laughs> not the fucking same, <laughs> huh? yeah. very, 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 very bald, very, very bald, you know, so. Hey, he, he, what's crazy to me, you know, his last fight with that guy, what's the guy's name that he fought last in Brazil? Uh, I think it was Mario yeah. Batista, was the same guy, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, the guy was some, actually tough. Some random the, Mexican, right? <laughs> no, the guy was – what's the guy's name, Matty? The guy's actually very yeah. tough. Yeah. Uh, no, Martinez, uh, Martinez. Martinez. Yeah, very good. Very good. He made, him look, he made him look easy. You know what? His fight with Martinez, I know that it was his last fight on the contract with the UFC. And then he was planning to boxing – on the Netflix boxing when Jake Paul was fighting Mike Tyson. Remember back then they were fighting July 20, I don't know. So he planned to fight, he just fought in Rio to get released to the contract because he said he had a contract with the UFC. So any other fight that was offered to him, he need to ask the UFC to let him fight. You know, he need to ask for permission. He said who will fight Martinez because then his contract will be done with the UFC. He don't need to, to, to ask nothing to the UFC. And then this guy go out there, re signed with the UFC. Now he's re signed with the UFC for like, I don't know, maybe seven, between seven and 10 fights. So wow. I don't know what he wants, bro. Like for sure, I think, yeah. I think right. he was, he was out for a little bit and he missed what, Mike? And what do you think he's missing? Those big money, what? Money. Money, right? those big checks, right? For sure, he was missing yeah. that. Yeah, he likes hey, to go to Disney thing. with family, my brother. Yeah. He has a house there, but he has yeah. a house in Orlando, yeah, big house. Yeah, but the parks are expensive, and now Florida <laughs> is a fucking expensive place. You guys know that. Hey, don't roll out, money. don't roll out Jose out of for a boxing match under under Dana White with everything, yes, Dana, that could with everything Dana's up to. That could be on the on the table here. Would you box Moicano? How much you need to box? Not much, my brother. Not much. 
No much. Don't say that. How not much? Not, not much, much. How much? Six hundred thousand. One hundred percent, even for less, my brother. Boxing is less. Easy. No, no, no. I'm no gonna be your manager if you say for less. I'm gonna be your manager. No, like if 500, I, you, I would do if, it. 500. Okay, 500. If I get you a fight for 500 dollars fight, boxing, man. anyone. Even Mike Tyson, even Jake <laughs> Logan, Logan Paul. Huh? Anyone, Mike anyone, Perry. 500,000, even Derek Lewis, my brother. Are you kidding Mike me? Perry, it's Mike just, Perry. Yes, boxing gloves. If you're talking about Barry Knuckles, it's a different story. But boxing okay. is easy, right? Yeah. How much for Barry Knuckles? But in Oku, we have to we have to talk about at least a million, million. dollars, right? At least yeah, at least one million. million one million to fight Mike Perry. One million and a half, right? One million and a half. And <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. to box is Jose Aldo, five hundred thousand. One hundred percent easy money. Easy money. Just <laughs> <laughs> Pay, 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 pay. Yeah, easy money. Boxing is it. Boxing is very easy. People that say boxing is hard don't know shit about fighting. <laughs> All right, so let's, move on, let's move on to the next fight here. We got the, women's bantamweight. You know what happened on these Pro fights, man? Yeah. You know what happened on these fights? Whenever you're very mm. tired. That's the moment that I go in the bathroom, that I take a little nap, that I order a food, that I do something, bro. <laughs> Don't get mad at me, but that's the moment right. when they start announcing, I'll go there, get my food, and do my stuff. Chew time, time to chew. <laughs> hey, go I'm gonna go, a little bit. I'm, I'm going to go on record here, and I'm going to make a bold prediction that this fight is going to be a scrap. This is you gonna think be so? Good, I think this is going to be a good fight. I think it's going to end up surprising some people. Could be, could be. I hope, I hope, I hope you're right. I do. Rocky hope Pennington is because Rocky Pennington is not a. She don't have a big name, but like she can scrap. Juliana Pena is an aggressive yeah. fighter. Uh, you know, she's a little cringe, cringy at times, but she's a very aggressive fighter. And she's fun to watch. I think this could end up being a decent, a decent fight. So we shall see. Yeah, I hope so because the way I see is gonna be the. Sleeping time, but I, I I hope you're right, bro. Honestly, I do I do hope you're right on that fight. Yeah. All right. Well, Pennington is a minus one eighty favorite. Pena is the plus one thirty dog. What do we got? What do we want to do with this one? You want to add this to the parlay or no, leave it out? No, no. <laughs> Just leave it out. <laughs> you know the rules, brother. You know so rules. On, so on your on your opinion, I don't need to the, talk about that. You know the rules, man. Yeah. Pennington is a is a candidate. Fight of the night. That's what you're saying. No, I'm not saying that. No. I mean, you what said it's gonna be. I said it. This, yeah, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna overperform based off of expectations. Like you said, you're gonna be sleeping <laughs> during this fight. Yeah, if you're not expecting nothing, yeah. if they throw a jab, it's going to be a good fight. That's what. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> oh, you think it's gonna be better? Is you think it's gonna be better than Derek Lewis and Francis Ngannou? Yeah. You asking? You asking me or Maddie? <laughs> Both. 100 percent that fight was terrible. <laughs> so you think that was yeah. gonna be better? Yeah, of course. So it's gonna yeah. be a scrappy then. Let's see. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Juliana Pena is down to scrap, bro. And Rocky Pennington like is scrap. I, we'll see, but we'll skip the fight for the parlay. But like who's your guys' pick if you have to pick one? Pena. I Raquel Pena. Pennington. I'm going Pennington. I got Raquel well. Pennington. Pena. Uh let's move on to the main event. Poetan taking on Khalil Roundtree. I don't know how this fight was made, but I mean, I actually like Khalil. You know, it's crazy, guys. When you look at like Magomed Ankalaev and Khalil Roundtree, these guys have like more knockouts than Pereira. I know the competition hasn't been as high, but they have more KOs than Pereira. Khalil Roundtree has more first round KOs than Pereira. It's actually pretty crazy, right? Poetan has been in the UFC for a long time, so I get it. But these are actually worthy opponents. So, People can say what they want about Khalil Roundtree. He has some losses that are questionable, like the Andrew Kalaba fight. But at the end of the day, he's a Muay Thai guy. He can hit hard. He, yeah. Does he have any chance to put Pereira's lights out in this fight? What do you think? Yeah, he uh, has, but – Yeah, always, always. Always, have, always. It's a, fight. Yeah. it's a fight. But, man, if you – let's let's use our brain. If you are a striker and you're planning to strike against Shama – it's going to be a hard night for you, for sure. 
100 percent the guy is the guy is the best at yeah. what he's what he does yeah and do you think Kalu Hantru is going to move to Thailand and now be a Muay Thai master Out of cow, no he's a boy yeah. no no it's not work like that brother and he's been saying I, that he's not gonna shoot for take down so I think he is making the statement he's losing I actually think that Alex has a better ground game than Khalil. I really yeah, do. I, th I think so. That shows that there is no way, think, my brother. Yeah, I mean. That's the I, fight I to we, make. That's the I fight think to make. Peloton, yeah, we got John Jones and, and Claire on the screen right now. Yeah, I, I think the fight could eventually happen, but I don't know. I, uh, I don't know why John Jones would risk it. I had to watch, two, I had to watch two, two things to make sure. I, I get this right because I, I'm I'm biased. I think Alex Pereira is gonna be anyone he fights against against King Kong. I think he's gonna win. So I'm yeah, Pereira is gonna be everybody. But then I was kind of looking, and then I watch a video of Carlos Pratis, the smoke dude. You know the dude that smokes. Oh yeah, I watch I watch his video, and he said he was living in Thailand when Khalil Rancho was there. And he said he trained multiple times with Khalil. And he said, bro, he's not that good. Pereira is going to kill him quick. And I said, okay. Wow. But, he, but he's a striker. He's a little biased maybe with Pereira. And then I watched a video of uh, an interview from Sean Strickland. And you know they don't like each other. They have a little. They do have a little beef like Khalil Roundtree and a uh, – and, uh, Yeah, I saw that. Sean Strickland. Yeah. He said he used to beat that guy every time, every every round, and this and that. He said he's not that good. He's powerful, but he said he's fought with both. He he fought with Pereira. He had so many sparring with, with Khalil. He said it's no chance. Like he just if something very crazy happened. Other than that, Pereira's winning. So after I I already thought Pereira's gonna win. After watching these two things, I said, bro, it's no way. Just the only way is this guy have a very bad way cut or oh, like a, a lucky shot or that a lucky happen. shot that or could happen, but, but you strike yeah. fighting Alex Pereira, that's not gonna be good for your health, yeah. bro. No, yeah. for sure not. But it's like if, if it's like if we got Dan Hooker right grappling Moicano. And he said, "Oh, we're gonna grapple. We're gonna grapple. It's gonna be a hard fight, you know. If, you know what I mean? If if he if he try to go, the guy is a master, right? Or oh, Demi Meyer, the guy is a master on the grappling. And you say you wanna grapple this guy? If you don't have a good grappling, if you just went to Brazil for like, oh, I live in Brazil one year, now I wanna grapple Demi Meyer. Like, well, you crazy or what? You know? That's yeah. that's kind of the disrespect I'm seeing this guy saying about Pereira for sure." One luck shot changed the fight, but bro, one thing is to say to promote hey, the fight. Let me ask I you, see... hey, hey, Gubich, you say that you see Alex Pereira winning everybody, right? Do you think he beat Ankalaev? I and do, do you believe think, he beat Ankalaev. And do you think they are trying to protect Pereira because Ankalaev was talking some shit, right? A little bit of both. I think I think Ankalaev doesn't sell as much, to be honest. Not even though Khalil sells, no. It's not that true, but I just think they need one guy to go to the Abu Dhabi card because if freaking Shimaev is pulling out all the time, they don't know if he's going to show up or not. They had to move Ilieto Puria against Max Holloway to there. You know, this fight wasn't there. That fight supposed to be in Salt Lake City. They moved to Abu Dhabi because they don't have a lot of guys. So I think that was unfortunate that they got to put Ankalaev. They give a shot to Ankalaev. He made a horrible fight with uh, with uh, John Blackovich. Remember in Vegas, they all went crazy. Next day, they remake another title for Jamal Hill against Glover this year. So uh, I I just think they don't like that guy so much, you know. So that's why they maybe hyping him up a little bit on that fight. Number five, they hyping him up, Alex, now to try to make a big fight in the future. Yeah. yeah, that could be. I will say Jan Block. Uh, Blahovich gave Pereira like pretty much his hardest fight outside of Adesanya. I mean, that yeah. was a close. That was a close decision win. Uh, it was there. Uh, you remember that was in Salt Lake City. That's yeah. why Boateng got there a little early. I, that's why 
the early right now. And that too, that was his first fight coming to light heavyweight. It's the first time, like, and right. then he got that freaking uh, Polish power there. I think that was because of this was his tough fight. But I, uh, yeah, Pereira is beating everybody, bro. All right, well, then here's the question. Do we go over or under one and a half rounds here? That's the total. If you over. think Pelotas, over. over. I think I think over too because I don't think Khalil for sure Khalil is going to strike, but I think Khalil is going to be like he's going to respect. He has to. He has to. Yeah. Uh, do we want to? How confident are we? We want to throw that in the last leg of the parlay or leave it how we have it? No, leave it how we have it because we never know that how, could be a knockout how, first round. How how is how how we have it right now? So right now we have Kayla Harrison over two and a half rounds, uh, Roman yes. Lice over two and a half rounds, and Jose Aldo. And the king Jose of Rio. Aldo, Jose Aldo Junior. Oh, I just lost that leg. Let me see with the same page right now. Brother, I'm still on French, French time. <laughs> I just got here yesterday. I'm still like, to me, it's like wow. night. You came back right after the fight. Like, when was your fight? Sunday, Sunday morning Sunday. there? Sunday. You, you didn't get no food there, nothing, Moicano? Come Moicano with a, with a croissant, with a coffee, no, nothing. I wish, my brother. I wish, but I was losing weight. No, no, after. No, even after, like a croissant, now coffee, the, you know? No, the fight was end up very, very, very late. And then... I, I went to the hotel and then I went to the airport, so I I could not eat the like the good food after the 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 the, the you, show. You could not afford to lose that flight, you right? You gotta go back no. home. Man, I was missing my home so bad. <laughs> I was missing home so bad. I was so glad when I got here. Nice. So let's sure. go. Let's 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 send the show. Send man, the man. message. Yeah, I'm send a message um, to these guys too. We need on that little time, Moicano. Tell these subscribers, tell these guys that watch what they gotta do. What's Moicano. up, motherfuckers? Oh, by the way, before you do that, Moicano, people keep asking when they can fly in and spar everyone. So tell them what they have to do to get us to that point where we're flying people in. Brother, we're gonna give you flight tickets to come here in Florida and to spar with us, but not, it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. Big gloves or small gloves. Big gloves because big gloves. big gloves, brother. Not bullshit training. Hard and training. they gotta sign a waiver, right? They gotta sign, sign, a, sign waiver, a waiver. Sign a waiver. Do your medicals, you know? Do your fucking <laughs> medicals. Because I'm not taking it easy on motherfuckers, brother. I'm I'm trying to generate content over here. I will knock these motherfuckers out. Brother. I'm telling you. you, you if, don't you saw sign the guy for that. Did a content about it. You saw the guy that did the content about it. They say he wants to come and whatever he needs to do. You saw that video or no? No, no. S send to me. But one thing is for yeah. sign, sign the fucking waiver and eat your <laughs> vegetables, my brother, because <laughs> you're going to be in fucking trouble. But when you get 50K, right, subs, we're going to do that, that, that promotion with the, with the fans. So thank you so much, everybody, that is uh, showing some love to show me the money. Thank you, Mary, again, to be in France. Thank you so much, Durinho, for being here on the podcast. And if you can, like, subscribe, and share, motherfuckers. Let's go. Now, time to rest. See you guys. And I'm giving you guys the final parlay. Here it is just for everybody. $100 pays almost $500 total payout. Over two and a half rounds, Roman Delize versus Kevin Holland. Jose Aldo, money line. And over two and a half rounds in, what was it, the co -main? What's the last one? Main was uh Kayla Harrison versus Kayla Harrison versus Caitlin Vieira. So those are the three legs of the parlay. 100 is going to return you almost $500 total payout. We'll see you guys next week for episode 26. Oh.